Hey, what's up guys, it's Darkroom Duels, and today we're gonna to be opening up the Egyptian God Structure Deck. So I'm really excited to open up these guys because these are super nostalgic, based around Slifer and Obelisk. We already got Rage of Raw, the entire pack just about dedicated to Raw, where we got new Raw support, but this actually brings a whole new concept to the entire like Egyptian God strategy, which is really cool, and I love the way that they've actually done these. The Structure Decks themselves have some really good support cards for the Egyptian Gods, a couple of good reprints, and I'm really excited to actually show you these. We're going to be opening up both of these in this video to show you guys what comes in each one of these because they were released as a pair. I figured why not go ahead and open them together. So we're going to get straight out on this, guys. But don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell on there so you can come part of the notification squad, and definitely check out the Patreon down in the description below for all those awesome rewards like getting your name, description, single single video, getting assigned cards in the mail, and even getting to request a deck profile every single one's your patron along with Test Hand. So without further ado, let's get straight on into this. So I think I'm going to open up Slifer first because I absolutely love Slifer. Slifer is actually my favorite of the three. I love them all. You Equally, of course, but I particularly summon Slifer the most out of all three of them. But uh, I do have plans. I will mention you guys. I've actually already opened um, one of these, and I actually have done a live duel with each of these, which is kind of cool. Um, so be on the lookout for that because we do have live duels of these coming up, where we're going to use both of these structure decks against one another straight out of the box. So be on the lookout for that. I'm going to do a budget build, hopefully, of these as well, where I take three of these and actually see what we can do with just three of the structure decks. So we have a lot of stuff coming out, and then when King's Court comes out, I'm going to try and do a full fledged like deck profile with the new face cards, which I think is going to be super, super fun. So let's go ahead and see what we get in the Slifer deck. So I will mention you guys, the mat is the same in each one. We do have on the back of the mat, you do get the strategies as normal. We don't get a rule book anymore. It's all kind of digital mixed in. So you get a strategy mat that has it on the back. And then both of the mats are exactly the same where you get Slifer on one side and Obelisk on the other. So they're pretty much the same except for the cards that you get in it, which is kind of cool. So let's go ahead and see what we get in the Slifer the Sky Dragon uh, structure deck. So first off, you're going to get a Slifer the Sky Dragon, which is very, very cool. Well, let's get up close with that really quickly so you guys can get a good look at all the cards. So we're going to get a Slifer the Sky Dragon, which is very cool if you guys are unfamiliar with his effect. He actually has a really devastating effect for every card in your hand. He does uh, gain a thousand attack points. But his, my favorite effect of this card is if a monster is his normal or special summon to your opponent's field in attack position, that monster loses 2,000 attack. And if it's reduced to zero, you immediately destroy which is why he's my favorite of the Egyptian gods. He does require three tributes like all of the other Egyptian gods to summon, but the next card kind of helps with that, which you're going to get one of these in each of the structure decks, which is a new card called Soul Crossing. So this card actually is from the anime, but Kaiba used it as a soul exchange in the anime against Ashizu, which was a very interesting duel. And these are actually the three fairies that he actually attributed in that particular scene in Battle City on top of the blimp. But what this card does, if you guys are unfamiliar with this, which we're just going to go over the effects of the new cards. During the main phase, Amelia's card resolves. You can tribute one Divine Beast monster, which is one of the three, uh, Slifer, Obelisk, or Ra. And when you do, you can tribute a monster your opponent controls, even though you do not control them. But if you tribute summon them this way, you apply the effect that until the end of the next turn after this card resolves, you can only activate one card effect per turn, not including the effect of a Divine Beast monster. We then get a Thunder Force Attack. Thunder Force Attack is a great card. You actually got Blaze Cannon and Rage of Raw, and now we're getting the Thunder Force Attack in the Slifer Structure Deck, which is pretty cool. Basically, this card lets you kind of gain attack points on Slifer, which has the ability that this activation effects cannot be negated. You can control a monster whose original name is Slifer the Sky, Sky Dragon, destroy as many phase up monster bonus controls as possible. Then if you activated this effect during your main phase, you can also apply the effect to draw cards equal number of cards destroyed by this effect and send your opponent's graveyard. And also, you can only attack with one monster, but you're only going to need to attack one monster because it's going to be Slifer. We then got Millennium Seeker. Now this is one of the weirder cards in here. This card is very awkward. It's kind of neat, but it's very awkward. Because what it does is, is you take if you when you take a thousand or more battle damage or effect damage, you can special summon this card from your hand and then target one monster in your opponent's graveyard, except a monster with a question mark attack. Your opponent can choose one monster from their deck, except a monster with question mark attack. And if they choose not to, or if the targeted monster has higher attack than the chosen monster, special summon that target to your field. And if you do, shuffle the chosen monster back into the deck. Otherwise, your opponent adds the chosen monster to their hand. Which again, it's kind of weird. I probably won't use this in a lot of the decks, but it is kind of a neat card. We 
we then get the ultimate divine beast. So this card's really neat because when an opponent's monster activate or when an opponent's monster declares an attack, you can discard a spell or trap. Uh, then target a divine beast in your graveyard, immediately special summon a defense system, then change the attack target to it. And then during the end phase, if you control a divine beast monster, you can destroy all phase of cards your opponent controls that are activated their effects on the field this turn, which is a very good effect. We then get a card that was out of the manga, I believe, which is Telius the Little Angel. This is kind of neat. That if this card is sent from the monsters under the graveyard, you can special summon a token to your side of the field. And then while you control a Telius the Winged Token, or Telius Winged Token, you can banish this card into the graveyard to target one spell or, or you can also manage this card from your graveyard and a spell card from your hand special summon two more tokens and also you cannot special monster turn you activate the spec but it's basically going to give you the tokens to tribute for one of your god cards we then get a reactor slime which is very good as a reprint as a super rare this was not reprinted before as a super rare and you get a Harpy's Feather Duster, which to me is the big point of this entire structure deck. We then, for the commons that we got in here, we got a Breaker the Magical Warrior, which is super nostalgic. Beast King Barbados, that's also really good for this as well. He's kind of like Guilford the Lightning. I wish really they would have put Guilford the Lightning in here instead of him, because that would have been kind of neat and throwback to Battle City. We get a Nine Tail Fox, generates tokens. Phantom Sky Blaster helps with tokens. This card's kind of neat because it helps protect a certain card on the field. That's an okay reprint. Claw Crow, that's a good reprint. I will say that is a pretty good reprint on the Claw Crow. Uh, you get a Electromagnetic Turtle. You get the upgraded version of Breaker, which is Breaker the Dark Magical Warrior, which is pretty neat. You get Escape Ghost, which also you can use as tribute, essentially, to summon out Slifer. You get three copies of Arima. Arima is a fantastic card in here because the Arima is going to help you out with your Lair of Darkness. I really like the fact that they did include the Arimas in here because it does help you out a lot with the strategy of the deck to basically make it a Lair of Darkness Slifer deck, which is kind of neat. So you get three of those. You get a Duke Shade as well. I really wish they would have given us a copy of uh, Lith Lady of Lament as well and a Darkest Diabolos because that pretty much would have printed reprinted the entire structure deck as a common which would have really helped out the deck but layer of darkness has been reprinted enough in my opinion but maybe a darkest day abalos reprint would have been nice as well you get a single copy of clock wyvern also a token generator the copy of the tiny spirit of Ashuda, that's pretty nice swords revealing light that's kind of a good throwback monster reborn that's a fantastic reprint Book of Moon, Enemy Controller, that's a pretty good card in here as well. A lot of people underestimate Enemy Controller. Pot of Avarice, that's pretty good as a reprint. March of the Monarchs, Supply Squad, Card Advance, that definitely needed a reprint. I remember when I picked these up for like $5 a piece to build the original um, Egyptian God deck that I built on the channel. The True Name, that's a good reprint for here. One Time Passcode, that's all right. Lair is a nice card to actually include in here for the token generating to help you summon out Slifer. Draw of Fate is a very cool card to include in here. Mirror Force, very good throwback staple card. Reckless Greed, having multiples of these in the deck is nice. I feel like they missed the mark a little bit with this card. They could have included the Egyptian God Slime in here too, and it would have helped out a lot for these structure decks. But it's a super rare maybe in each one of the structure decks, giving you one of these and an Egyptian God Slime in each one, because it's pretty generic to be able to summon it to your side of the field. So I really feel like they did miss a mark here, where they could have given us that card with giving us the Metal Reflect Slime. It's like they're hinting at using it, but they don't actually include it. You get a Golden Apple. This card's okay. It's it's not the greatest reprint back to the front which is actually a misprint back to the front because it's not actually printed right there that's kind of neat so i actually got a misprint card in here um and then we got a the dual links cards as well which they're actually talking about king's court which is going to help out the structured decks a lot so we're actually going to just slide these to the side real quick while we pop open the obelisk structure deck so we're just going to pop this one open up real quick um a lot of the cards are the same for the reprints which is why i just figured i would open both of these in the same video for you guys because they kind of are very similar in structure deck in the way that they made them which is what's kind of cool um, but they're very good structure decks. Both of them are very good structure decks for like a beginner player and somebody who wants to play something nostalgic. So we're going to go ahead and pop this open really quick. Like I said, the mat's the same. So we're not going to go over the mat again. We're just going to go over the actual like structure deck itself. So 
You get Novelist the Tormentor, if you guys are unfamiliar, you drew three monsters, summon this big 4k beat stick to your side of the field and it has the ability, then neither player can target this card with card effects, and then once per turn during the end phase, if this card is special summoned, send it to the graveyard, and then you can also tribute two monsters, destroy all monsters opponent controls, and this card cannot attack the turn you activate this effect. Still really good as a 4000 beat stick stat. So you're gonna also going to get a copy of Cross Souls or Soul Crossing, which is pretty good to also include it. And we get uh, Obelisk's actual signature attack, which is Fist of Fate, which is a very awesome card. And what it does is this card's activation effect cannot be negated. If you control monster whose original name is Obelisk the Tormentor, negate the effects of one phase of monster opponent controls. And if you do destroy it, and if you do that for the rest of the turn, this card resolves. That monster's effects are negated, as well as monsters on the field of the same original name. And if you do also activate the effect during your uh, main phase, you can apply the effect to destroy all special or all spell and traps your opponent controls. So basically, this lets you falcon punch a single monster on your opponent's side of the field, which is pretty cool. We got a Yu-Gi-Oh! R card in here, which is Divine Evolution. Divine Evolution is really neat. I thought they were going to make like an upgraded Slifer, upgraded Obelisk, and upgraded Raw, but they didn't. I don't think they will. Uh, I don't think they want to like touch that, but Divine Evolution kind of hinted at they were going to, but then they didn't. But this card's name act, or this card's effect cannot be negated. You choose one monster you control whose original type is a Divine Beast, or its name is the Wicked Avatar, Dreadroot, or Eraser, except a monster that's already affected by a Divine Evolution. It gains a thousand attacks as effects. Uh, its effects, activations, and its activated effects cannot be negated, and also gains the ability that when it declares an attack, you can make your opponent send a monster they control to the graveyard, which is kind of neat. I like the effect, but I don't see it seeing a lot of play. We then play, a, we then get a copy of Level Resist Wall. This kind of card's kind of neat. I could see it coming up every so often, kind of neat play card. That if a monsters you control would be destroyed by battle or by an opponent's card effect, you can target one of those monsters, especially on two monsters, especially on monsters from your deck in defense position as the combined equal level of the monster, um, but negate their effects. And you can only activate this card once per turn. So it's kind of neat. Um, it's kind of a cool card, but I don't know how much play it'll actually see. We then play, we can get a single copy of Angel 01. Angel 01, I really like this card. I think this is the best of the new cards, to be honest with you, because you can special summon it from your hand just by revealing any level seven or higher monster in your hand. You only special summon this card once per turn this way, and then while you control this special summon card, you can tribute one level seven or higher monster in attack position during your main phase, um, in addition to your normal summoner set. So basically use an additional normal summon, which is kind of neat. Those cards are always great. So that's pretty much it for the new cards. For the reprints, we get a super rare mare mare which has never been printed in super rare so i love that we get a copy of harpy's feather duster just like the other one and then we get three copies of nimble momonga which is kind of neat that you get the triple copies of the nimble momonga which is a very good card for this because it can just kind of swarm the field and plus it's a flying squirrel who doesn't love that one copy of bounzu the soul eater this is kind of neat cyber dragon is a reprint that's pretty good you get a hardened arm dragon which is also neat N super nimble mega hamster you just get one unfortunately i don't super understand why they only gave us one i mean i guess kind of because it can help you without with the nimble bolongas you get a copy of a evil swarm mandragora which is nice you get photon saber tiger uh which is kind of neat you get double of those that's kind of cool uh you get an evil swarm salamandra you get a you get three Raw's Disciples. I feel like this should have been in both of the structure decks. I don't feel like this should have just been in this one. Because this card is pretty much mandatory that you need it for a Egyptian deck like this. It's just really good because it helps you swarm the field and helps you get out your copies of your god cards a little bit easier. Unmasked Dragon, this card's kind of cool when it's destroyed and sent to the graveyard. You can spell summon a worm monster with 1500 or less defense from your deck, which is also very good. You get Nimble Beaver. You just get one Nimble Beaver, unfortunately. Again, kind of, I feel like. I feel like the decks are good, but I feel like they could have done a little bit more with them to give us a little bit more better reprints. Like Condemned Witch is a good reprint as well as a common. Then you get Gizmak Uka, the Festival Fox of Fertil or, uh, Festivities or whatever it is. This card's pretty good. Um, then you get a copy of the Gizmak Makami, which is also pretty good as a reprint. It was a super rare, but this was actually a secret rare, um, which is kind of neat. We get a Brain Control, which is a good card, actually. It's still a good card. It's not as good as Mind Control, because what it does is you can only take a monster that is not been, um, you can take control of a targeted monster into the end phase that can be normal summoner set, so it's an okay card. You get Monster Reborn, which is pretty good. Different Dimensional Capsule, I used to play this all the time. It's kind of like um, Gold Sarcophagus, but it banishes its face down, which is kind of neat. 
Um, you play, you get a single copy of Pot of Avarice, good reprint, double summon, also good, Chalice, Lance, and Dress, which is really good reprints in here. Supply Squad, also kind of neat. The Stormforth, Monarch Stormforth, I feel like that also should have been in both of them. Call the Haunted, really good. Cloning, I don't feel like this has had that many reprints, but it's an alright card in here. Drowning Mirror Force, kind of neat as well. And then that's it for the Obelisk Structure Deck. So I feel like they included a couple of good reprints. I feel like they could have included something besides Harpy's Feather Duster in here that would have really been a good, like selling point on these structure decks maybe like some torrential tributes in here would have been nice um the harpy's feather duster is nice because in the charmer one they included regeki which was good i feel like the mare mare is kind of neat because they use the opportunity to rarity bump something which is kind of nice and then we got three six or we got three five we got five new cards which is kind of neat i like that we got the five new cards as well cross souls or soul crossing is the best of all of the cards that we got in here i did get a misprint that's kind of neat though i did kind of get a misprint because that is totally just like a splotch right there which is kind of cool um but other than that like the structure decks they're okay they're not the greatest structure decks they've ever printed. I feel like they are afraid to like give us an entire like archetype dedicated Slifer Obelisk and Raw, which is kind of weird to me. The Reactor Slime is a good card to get in here, but I feel like they should have included the Egyptian God Slime in both of them. And I feel like it would have made the structure decks infinitely better and would have been a better selling point to me. Maybe include Torrential Tribute in here. Maybe include something like a Torrential. Maybe include something like... Uh, the Egyptian God Slime. I'm really kind of amazed that they didn't include God Slime in here because it would have been a really good reprint in here because that card is extremely expensive at the current moment and it just would have helped out the Structure Decks a lot. But overall, I think that they're very well done. I really like the fact that we do have a now Slifer deck and a Obelisk deck that we can actually flush out. I feel like King's Court is going to help out the deck for Slifer a lot more than it's going to help Obelisk, but it's also going to be really cool to be able to build a deck with all three of them with stuff like Soul Crossing, which I'm going to do. Don't be, don't worry about it. I am going to do a deck based around Slifer, Obelisk, and Raw all together. I'm going to do one for just Slifer, one for Obelisk, and one for just Raw later on in the month. So so don't worry about that. And I am also going to try and update Slifer and Raw together in King's Court because the Poker Knights or the um, the Face Card Knights, which is Jack, King, Queen, those are going to be really good for Slifer and Raw opposed to Obelisk because with Thunder Speed Summon, it's going to be really nice to be able to use them uh, to be able to get out your copy of Slifer extremely quickly. So I'm really excited to do a lot of stuff with these. I always love to do cool stuff with the old school Slifer, Obelisk, and Raw, and I'm really excited to show you guys what I've got for these because I have a lot of stuff in store. So don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, guys. Hit the bell on there so you can come bar notification squad and definitely check out the Patreon down in the description below and be on the lookout for the live duel. We're actually going to use both of these decks straight out of the box to be able to duel and uh we're actually going to do we're going to do a video of that we're going to do a video of a budget build where we're going to use just three of the structure decks of each one we're going to do a profile of each one of those which i think is going to be kind of cool and we have um we had this opening as well so we had some really good stuff that we got going on for these so anyways guys this is dark arm duels don't forget to like comment subscribe hit the bell in there so you can come part of the notification squad and we'll see you guys in the next video see you later guys